Even as images of a hurried U.S. evacuation effort from Kabul capture the headlines, the country's vice president is in Southeast Asia, assuring nations of an enduring commitment to the region. Kamala Harris is currently in Vietnam on the second leg of a Southeast Asia trip aimed at countering China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific. In Hanoi, she reiterated comments made in Singapore about China's unilateral claims in the South China Sea and the U.S. commitment to the region. We need to find ways to pressure and raise the pressure, frankly, on Beijing to abide by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and to challenge its bullying and excessive maritime claims. The United States will pursue a free and open Indo-Pacific that promotes our interests and those of our partners and allies. There should be no doubt we have enduring interests in this region and we have enduring commitments as well. Those commitments include, of course, security. And joining me now for more from Canberra is Peter Jennings. He is executive director of the Australian think tank, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Welcome, Mr. Jennings. Kamala Harris said in Singapore that the United States had an enduring commitment in Asia. Is that an assurance that holds water given the chaotic scenes coming out of Kabul right now? It's an assurance that uh, the countries of Southeast Asia and many others, including my own, want to hear very regularly from the uh, Biden administration. Uh, you know, I think it's fair to say that um, all the countries of the Indo-Pacific uh, are watching with horror what's happening in Afghanistan. And they will, to some degree or another, be asking themselves the question, what does this mean for America's commitment in Asia? Uh, it's very hard to spin any gold out of the debacle that is happening in Afghanistan. And I think it is incumbent on the United States to be demonstrating its interests in the way that the vice president is attempting to do. And it's also incumbent on America's allies like Australia to be talking to the US about the nature of American commitment and seeking to encourage more from the United States. Do you think the United States has a credibility problem currently when it comes to its commitments in the Indo-Pacific? The United States has had a credibility problem in the Indo-Pacific really from the second term of the Obama administration on. Uh, the Obama administration sought to really look the other way when China was militarizing a whole bunch of features in the South China Sea. Uh, then we had, uh, frankly, the disastrous Trump administration and his attempts, rather foolish attempts, to broker some sort of deal with Kim Jong-un. And now we have the Biden administration, which very clearly is wanting to be more inward-looking and I think raising the, the bar for American willingness to participate in military operations overseas. So it's not just Biden. It's, it's a problem that has been in play for, for some years now, I, I think reflecting a more inward-looking American mood, which is really shared across the major parties. How, how does what's happening in Afghanistan change any of that? It makes it a little worse. Uh, it, it, it shows the countries of the region that despite two decades' worth of saying to the Afghanistan people and to Afghanistan administrations in Kabul, don't worry, we have you back, we're not going to leave you. Uh, when push came to shove, that is precisely what the United States did. And it would seem, in Joe Biden's case, um, w without much concern for, frankly, what then happened. And so if you're uh, in Taiwan, uh, for example, uh, or if you're a Southeast Asian country worried about security in the South China Sea, what does that mean from the, your perspective of um, the reliability of American commitments? Now, you know, I, I can accept that what the Biden administration is doing is actually trying to put more priority uh, on uh, the Indo-Pacific region, but it's, it's not a very successful way to do that by actually walking away from what was a 20-year-plus commitment in, in Central Asia. Uh, and that's where I think the source of um, regional concern comes from. Uh, and clearly, one reason the vice president is here uh, is to try to allay those concerns by um, telling us why 
the Indo-Pacific is going to be more important to the United States in the future than was Afghanistan. And of course, a large part uh, of allaying those concerns are to do with uh, Chinese influence uh, in the uh, region. Would you say that China has benefited from what is, well, arguably a messy U.S. exit from Afghanistan? I, I think China will seek to benefit, absolutely, and one can see that in, in their own uh, uh, domestic press right now. Uh, Chinese uh, uh, media outlets very quickly were saying to Taiwan, well, this just demonstrates to you, Taiwan, that China will not come to your assistance. Uh, so there, there's no doubt that I think China sees some delight in this and it will be using every opportunity to say to countries in the Indo-Pacific, you have to deal with us because you can't rely on the United States. But isn't that something that countries in the Indo-Pacific are clearly aware of? Hasn't the main problem really been that they don't want to choose between the United States or China, but they would like to have the United States there? And now that Kamala Harris is saying, look, we are going to be there, that assurance, is it good enough for them? I, I think the, um, the, the very fine words of the Biden administration from a diplomatic perspective certainly play better in the region than Donald Trump, for example. But there is something of a gap between the, the diplomacy and the actual doing part, the actual presence that the United States military can provide. That's what I think keeps countries worried. Uh, you know, another point I'd make simply is to say here that America is very clear, clearly seeing, saying to the region and to its allies, we expect you to do more for your own defence. So I don't think this is simply a problem to visit on Washington. It's something that we all in the region will have to do to look after our own defence. And in fact, that's probably the thing that will secure American interest more profoundly is if they feel that we are actually prepared to carry some of the security burden as well. Is that something that uh, countries in the region are prepared to do? Uh, well, you, you'll get a varied picture, of course. I, I think it's a message that has been understood in Australia, and we are certainly seeking to uh, expand our defence capability very quickly. I think it's a message that Japan understands as well. And if you go to Southeast Asia, you, you can look at individual countries. Singapore, Vietnam uh, have always put significant priority on strong defence capabilities. Other countries, for example, Indonesia, I, I would say is somewhat drifting in terms of how it thinks about its regional security approach. Right. None of the ASEAN countries particularly want to find themselves in the centre of a fight between China and the United States. But nevertheless, that is where um, a large area of strategic competition is playing out. It's, it's playing out for influence in Southeast Asia. Uh, and in some ways, that is going to have to force the Southeast Asian countries to work out what will they do to deal with that situation. We'll have to leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much for joining us today. Peter Jennings from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. It's my pleasure. Thank you.